Welcome to the Visionary Chronicles, a business strategy podcast where we provide insight to those looking for creative, executable strategies built around the latest disruptive ideas, innovative cultures, product creators, and marketing solutions. Welcome to the Visionary Chronicles. Uh, Today we're going to talk about team leadership. You know, the five things high performing teams do consistently. And I think this is a really important subject, not only from the standpoint of how does it make brands better or your company better, but also team is a key word today as well, knowing that how integral the success of a company is for teams that are passionate for your brand or for your company. So team is one thing, High-performing teams is a whole nother level. So I thought it would be a great subject for us to talk about not only retaining teams, but what you'll find with these high-performing teams, they love staying together. So it's a really important subject for retaining employees, but also making employees happy. So there's kind of this uh, formula that everybody's trying to achieve in not only forming a team, much less trying to build a high performance team. So there's this hiring process, there's this building process, and then there's this nurturing process um, for high performing teams. You know, it's kind of been this holy grail. You know, hiring is one thing, building's another thing, and then nurturing's the third thing. And being able to build it into a high octane, high performance team that achieves what the brand has set before them is an important aspect to what these high-performing teams not only do, how they achieve it, but also the longevity of these teams and how they work together. So each of these teams has unique needs, personalities, individual triggers that drive a passion in each team member. So, So I say this because these are all things that are somewhat or intangible. You know, you just don't know. You don't know what the unique needs are of somebody on a team. The personalities are a little bit more obvious, but not necessarily. So you so you have to deal with all these dynamics that are intangible, that go outside of the skill set. And that's why you see so many times with position wrecks now, and I don't know if you've seen it, but the direction that these wrecks are taking, and when we hire people at Liquid Mine, when we hire people for her, these consumer product brands, the needs have changed. And you still need someone with a skill set, but you need somebody that's going to fit with your culture. And that's an interesting dynamic that we never had to deal with before. But if you're going to have a team, think about it. You need to have them fit within the culture, not only of the company, but even on a micro level with the team side. So you need to kind of understand and somehow draw out of these individuals during the interview. Let them be themselves. And I'll say that with with teams and individuals that you bring together or individuals rather that you hire is don't just ask the questions. You know functionally for the most part they're going to be able to do the job. The thing is, are they going to be staying with you? Do they have a passion for the brand? And culture, they're going to be a good fit for what you're doing. And These are critical components as we go through this to successfully building a high performing team. You know, so how does a brand build a competent team, you know, and one who gets along with one another and consistently produces superior results consistently, not just one hit wonders. You hit a lot of people that may have a great idea. It's like a one hit wonder band. They have one great hit and then they're gone. They disappear. You never hear from them again. May have been a great song, but you need more than one hit to build an album. So you want to make sure that you build a team that's going to build an album of great hits. So first, when looking at building a high performance, what I call this high octane team, understand there are primary needs of each team and individuals. Now there's a couple different levels to this, so I'll go through these. The first there are three areas that they're looking for, these high performing teams. I'm not just saying a team, somebody who's on with a company that's just building stuff, really doesn't have a set vision on executing superior results across everything that they do 
and are a high performing, high octane team. These are three areas that they're looking for before they decide to join a company. They may seem obvious, but they're critical when you're hiring an individual. And if they ask question about these, you probably are going to feel comfortable that they're going to fit hopefully within your culture but they will definitely be a fit with a high performing, high octane team. Number one is autonomy, the ability to perform without hindrance. And that may seem a little bit like an oxymoron when you talk about team and they want autonomy. Well, what they want is they know the people on their team are competent, but they also want to have the ability to achieve their peace within that project that is going to achieve overall team success without hindrance. So autonomy as a team member is very important. And this is kind of that when you think about, and probably have all had it, a good analogy to this is the boss is kind of only always looking over your shoulder, you know, every single day, Hey, did you make progress? Did you make progress? Well, these high performing teams know how to manage progress. They know how to manage success and they know the expectation of the leaders within the company. So they want autonomy in order to achieve that. Second thing is competence. Um, not competence in them. Interestingly enough, when you talk to them is competence in who else is on the team. They want to know that they're not carrying a hundred percent of the load for the team. So they want to have the skill set to perform. So when you assign tasks and we've been working and I've worked with many high octane teams with brands at, at Oakley, TaylorMade, Adidas, and each one of those high performing, high octane teams is passionate for the brand, passionate for what they're doing on the product side or on the marketing side. Uh, but they want to know that others that are part of their team also have a complementary skill set and are competent. So autonomy, competence, and the third is relatedness. What I mean by that is being able to interact with their team members. Is this person going to be an introvert? We can't talk to them. Or is this somebody that's outgoing, somebody that fits within the culture of the team? So the team wants autonomy, competence, and relatedness. They want to have someone that they can work with. You know, Then there are three levels of support and building an effectiveness in the team outside of these three areas I just mentioned. The three are dependence, which is the individual. And it's important to remember these three levels. These are three levels. The ones I gave you before are three requirements. These are three levels that your team member is going to go through. So first is dependence. They're just an individual. They're the baby in the group, the newbie, you, you know, they're learning from others. This is why it's so crucial to have a process for onboarding people. Please have an onboarding process. I've never seen so many failures in companies with employees coming on board, sitting at their desk for three to four months and not having achieved anything nor learned anything. So have an onboarding process so they can move to the next level, which is interdependence. That is team level, you know, working with a group and being part of a team, finding a solution together. That's the team aspect to it. And then the third is, interdependence. They become a leader. It's the leadership level, finding ways to make others successful. And this is critical. I'll say again, it's the leadership level, finding ways to make others successful, not you, others successful, your team successful, you're successful, you know, be humble and grateful and do not take credit for others successes. Give it to those who achieved it. You had the vision. The team executed that vision and you'll be recognized for it. You don't need to tell people that you don't need to tell people you had a great football game. And if you're telling people that probably didn't have a great football game, there'll be plenty of people talking about the game and how well you did. So you don't need to tell other people. So be a leader, be humble, be grateful and find ways to make others successful. Be a leader. So it's dependence, interdependence, and then independence. Um, the reason I mentioned these three is on all high performing, high octane teams, they go through these two, three steps extremely fast, much quicker than just a regular team on a brand, meaning that they onboard very quickly. They interact with the team and they're usually a shining star within that team and they quickly move into a leadership position. So they're kind of what people maybe call hypos. 
Um, they're all part of this high performing team. So these are the three levels that they go through on a group, on a, on a growth perspective. So what are the five things that high performing teams do consistently? Um, so number one is they're real with each other. Um, what that means is they express personal and professional emotions and share with the team. You know, they're building a more intimate bond with one another, not only on the job, but maybe after work and or even on the job where they're just not talking about the job. They're real with one another. So what that does is in conversations that they have in team meetings, whatever it may be, they're more direct with one another without offending each other. So that's number one. Number two is they share praise. They're more likely to share praise with others versus trying to take credit for themselves. Again, it's all about the team and no friction. Okay. Doesn't matter who wrote the song. Y'all are part of a band. So they share the praise with one another. Number three is they bond. They spend more high octane, high performing teams. You look at them and I've seen many of them and I've, I've been so blessed to have managed many of these high octane teams at these global brands that I've worked with personally and or through liquid mine. They bond, they spend more time together on non work related items and discussions. So it's not all about work. They need to have the ability to interact with one another on a personal and professional level. Number four, without a doubt, they're strategic, not only with their work, but more importantly with their time. They're more efficient. They're more effective. They're finding ways to get more done in a shorter period of time. They're working together through interdependence and independence. They've moved way beyond dependence. They don't need anybody helping them. They want to move into a leadership role sooner rather than later. Number five is they communicate directly. They're more likely to communicate through voice versus text or emails. What I say, be honest, be live. And this is one that not a lot of people think of based on the technology we have today is, well, I'll just text, I'll just email. These high performing, high octane teams want to communicate fast and they want to communicate more personally. So they communicate directly and it's often, if not always through voice. And I say voice, not voicemail. It's a voice jumping on the phone and talking to somebody directly. So they communicate directly. So these are five points again, that when you look at what they're looking for, autonomy, competence, and relatedness with their team. And the growth is dependence, interdependence, independence, from individual to team to leader. They move along that path much quicker than a normal team, significantly faster. And then the five areas that high performing teams do consistently, again, it's they're real with each other, they share praise, they bond, they're strategic, and they communicate directly. So what I say, building, managing, and growing a successful team for your brand takes a commitment to process and action. It's the approach to getting team members up to speed and the effort to assure they are satisfied with what it takes to be part of a successful team and brand. You know, this is one thing that, again, many brands and many companies overlook, whether it be onboarding, whether it be a process to building a high performance team and understanding what their needs are, not what your needs are, what their needs are. So understand these different areas that uh, a traditional high performing, high octane team looks for in, in working with your company, your brand or your service. So. I always say stay true, stay authentic, be different, be great. Um, if you have any comments or if you'd I'd love it, if you could leave a review, if you like what we're doing at the Visionary Chronicles or across Apple, Pod, Apple Podcasts, we're at uh, Google, uh, Spotify, Pandora, virtually any uh, distribution of podcasts. Um, we would love to have your feedback. Um, the second thing is you can be re I can be reached at liquidmindsight.com. That's L I Q. U-I-D-M-I-N-D-S-I-T-E dot com or first last name Brian B-R-Y-A-N-S-M-E-L-T-Z-E-R dot com. 
or feel free to email me at brian smeltzer at outlook.com or brian at liquidmindsight.com again thanks for your time i always appreciate it look forward to the next visionary chronicles have a great day I wanted to thank you for listening to the Visionary Chronicles podcast, and hopefully you find the information that we put out each week very useful. And what we found through reviews and when we were originally putting together their Visionary podcast was found both personal and professional um, advice as well as information those listening to the podcast were looking for. So we wanted to be unique in that way, and hopefully you found that to be the case. And appreciate the reviews that you've been sending in, and we would certainly appreciate you signing up for our newsletter as well, which is an expansion upon what you're seeing on or hearing on the the Visionary Chronicles podcast. And you can find that at two locations. One is briansmeltzer.com, B-R-Y-A-N-S-M-E-L-T-Z-E-R.com, or our company site, liquidmindsite.com, L-I-Q-U-I-D-M-I-N-D, site, S-I-T-E.com. So we would appreciate any reviews, additional reviews, comments you may have. Sign up for the newsletter, and we look forward to talking with you next week.